So when I went back home and told uh, my dad that I was born again, he couldn't take it. He said, you have to denounce that. Never, ever think of that and never move from your religion. I was convinced that I needed Christ in my heart. I needed a personal relationship with God. And because of that, my father said, I am actually going to, to disown you as a son. He asked me to leave his family because I could not denounce Christ. He's Catholic. I'm born again. He doesn't want to hear anything called the born again experience. So he kicked me out. I went to live with my mother. And that is the first time I got exposed to poverty. There was nothing. There was little to eat. No clothes. It's enough. You know, you can put on the same thing again and again and again and again until it's really, it gets torn. And then somehow you get another. It's like you can even tell who is coming by the color of the shirt. Because some people would put on the same thing forever. So I said, wow. So I almost wanted to go back to my dad, but then I thought of the eternal rewards. And also what happens when you denounce Christ? I said, no, I will take it. And that is when I decided to serve. I said, okay, if Christ is misunderstood or, you know, if I can be persecuted for the gospel, then what else should I do apart from preaching the gospel? So I decided to get involved in ministry and I've been in ministry for the last 29 years and yet I look 29 <laughs> so those were the days of Idi Amin some of the older guys here would have heard of Idi Amin that was a bad 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 government I've had people in America say oh we have it bad year and then our leadership you have got no idea what a bad government can be in Uganda every morning if you walked in the city and you did not jump over a dead body you would even wonder what happened we lived under terror it was bad so being born again when churches were officially closed, the only religion allowed in Uganda was Islam and the Catholics and the Anglican Church. Uh, Idi Amin could not close the Catholic Church because of the hospitals and the schools. So because the rest of the churches, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the uh, Adventists, others did not have schools, he closed all of them. So, we had to go in what we call the underground church. And if we wanted to go and pray hiding on the mountain, we would share and say, uh, we will meet at Zion. Meaning, if anybody else is there, he won't know where we're going. Because we've gone the mountain. Or the valley, we would use biblical terms so that we can know where we're going. I, we prayed like that and we were and our major prayer was God help us change this government we actually prayed Idi Amin out of power he was so powerful he was calling himself the conqueror of the British Empire he kicked out everybody that was not black Americans, uh, Asians Europeans all of the missionaries, business people, and you know, out of Uganda. So church closed, businesses closed, you know. So we were under that tyranny for eight years. So powerful. But we prayed and miraculously, because there was no human way of explaining how Idamin got out of power. God took him out because we prayed. And when he got out, we got our freedoms. And they happened to be one of the first people that started ministries then to preach. And when you go to Western Uganda, the work that came out of my ministry is the major, uh, the major churches that are covering the whole of Western Uganda. When we pray, God answers, God responds. He can respond on an individual level, a family level, community level, even on a national level. 
So may we not be helpless in the United States when things start going wrong. The only thing we need to do is to start setting time for prayer. It is very important. I know how busy the system is here. Everybody is running and, you know, uh, everything is so set to the dot. You miss a minute, it's like you have committed the biggest sin. That's America. So, so specific, so precise. But, you know, we need to go back to prayer. I read biographies a lot. I read of Charles Finney. I read of all these other guys who take hours in the woods praying, praying for the nation. The average American, according to statistics, statistics, prays for only three minutes. The average American, only three minutes of prayer. And because we have not prayed enough, things are starting to slip out of the way. And you know, we don't want to start fighting to regain the ground. We need to maintain and hold the ground, that the territory that we already have. Idi Amin was trying to turn Uganda into an Islamic state. Actually, we had two holidays. We had Friday, that was a, like Sunday is a free day here. In Uganda, Friday was a free day for the Muslims to go and pray. And then Sunday also for the Catholics and the Anglicans. So it was messed up. You work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, off. Saturday, work again. Sunday, off. But we prayed and Uganda never went the way that Idi Amin had wanted. So political leaders can have agendas and programs. But God is God over everything. And we are his people. He has given us authority to ask. And he said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. These are very simple things. But actually, most people get disappointed with the simple gospel. They want the deep one. Revelational ones. The theologically complicated where you speak some bit of Hebrew and Greek and somebody says, wow. And then say, what, what did he say? You, so we need to go back to the basics, to the simple gospel that people can understand and actually apply. I was sharing with one uh, Af- African friend of mine. He was telling me that education means learning what you are able to do. If you learn what you can't do, then you, are, you have learned nothing. You've learned it. But you can't do it. So what have you learned? The answer is nothing. So even in the Bible, we must be able to apply the truth that we learn on a day-to-day life. And prayer is key. There are so many books that are written about prayer more than the prayers that are actually prayed. More sermons written, but less prayer. Prayer is hard because even the enemy doesn't want you to pray. Because he knows what happens when you pray. I want us to open our Bibles in the book of uh, uh, Second Chronicles. And I will ask for help. Maybe Pastor Bernard to help me read. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Uh-huh. people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The Bible says that if my people, if only if my people, if we can own, if we his people, we are his people, bought by the blood, washed by the blood, Forgiven. All our sins are forgiven. We are children of God. As many as have received Him, to them we give the power to become sons of God. Yes. We are His children. And He says, If my people that are called by my name, we are Christians, 
followers of Christ, we actually take Christ's name. Christians called by my name. If my people called by my name shall humble prayer requires humility. Being able to admit that you can't do it. Being able to know that you need help. It's easy for everybody to try somehow to get it done, but you know we need God. If my people call by my name shall humble themselves and pray and also seek my face. I really thank God for my mom <coughs> who taught me how to pray and seek God's face. That's a heritage I will always be proud of. My mom, I've never seen anybody pray as much as my mom prays. Every morning, <coughs> she would pray for us. Sometimes she would call us and touch our heads. And he said, you know, I will pray for you. And she would speak good things, pray about our future, pray about everything. One by one, one by one. And even today, she still prays for each one of us. And I have seen God use us as a family and bless us as a family because my mom prayed. If my people can only humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I've seen my mother take time in prayer even and fasting. She leaves food alone and locks herself in a room with her Bible. She takes time reading the Bible and she's praying and eating nothing but praying and praying and praying. This is how we used to pray for our country when Ida Amin was in power. We would pray and sometimes eat nothing. I was visiting one pastor friend of mine and he said, uh, Pastor Solomon, I've been in ministry but I've never, I've never fasted. I said, really? I said, yeah. He said, yeah. I said, let's try it. Let's do it tomorrow and we'll do it together. He said, okay. We started praying and praying and, you know, studying and sharing the word. And then at 10 in the morning, he said, Pastor Solomon, I'm hungry. Can I eat something? I said, can you wait a little bit? You're making this kind of a sacrifice a little bit. He said, okay, can I go sleep? I said, yeah, you can go sleep. He slept for three hours and said, Pastor Solomon, is it time yet? <laughs> he was, I mean, in, in Uganda, we'll fast, we'll pray. And God has really moved our country because of the prayers of the people. If you come to our country, Pastor John and, and Pastor Phil can tell you, every Friday night, Churches are open for prayer the whole night. People leave their homes and where are they coming? To church. We don't have carpets like this. It's a, sometimes a dirt floor or sometimes um, cement. We pray, we praise, we worship, we pray again, we pray, we do prayer walks, but we are praying and asking God to intervene and indeed God has moved in our country. Uh, one other testimony. I remember one day when this president that we have came into power he was a socialist. He never believed in prayer or church. We are coming from the days of Idi Amin and here we are getting a godless president. We went on our knees and said Lord visit him. Whether it is in his dreams, whichever way, whichever tool you're going to use, visit our president. We cannot have somebody sitting on the top seat of this country not respecting you as God. This nation belongs to you. We prayed for our nation. We prayed for him. After prayer, the wife of our president got born again. When the wife of the president got, got born again, the children started going to church with their mother. And he was outnumbered. <laughs> the only guy. And everybody else is a Christian. And then he came on TV and said, well, I need to let the nation know that I backslid when I was at university because I asked the pastor if it was right for 
a Christian to join the army and fight injustice? And the pastor said, no. 